many, many tiny layers. So when the wildfire comes through, it just burns off the first few layers and the left of it is left, uh, left unharmed. And there's also natural oil. Make sure you have everything that is valuable and uh, medication, everything you need on board on the train because you don't have access to your luggage anymore. You will see some of them only in camelops, okay? Thank you for choosing us.
great sweater. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, are you talking? Oh. <laughs> 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 And then switching on to the Thompson River, which brings us into the Thompson Plateau and that semi arid uh, desert I mentioned. We'll also be uh, going through Hell's Gate, so we'll be going through Hell and Back together, which is pretty exciting. And we're going to see where the Thompson and the Fraser Rivers meet to uh, to create that confluence, as we call it. So, lots in store for you. Uh, now, a couple of things just kind of get you all situated while you were uh, getting used to everything here. And put it over your lap. If you all want to practice that, you'll be doing that a lot over the next two days. I promise you that. Uh, the dining room is about half the size, so we will be picking our favorites to eat today. So, everyone, on your best behavior. We like big smiles. It's always good. <laughs> In fact, are you happy with so how we do it? Is we have a pole. <laughs>
Typically, when fires come in, is it easier for the trees to come up? But they also need this heat to release their seeds. So their bark is even specially kind of designed by nature. It's made up of many, many tiny layers. So when the wildfire comes through, it just burns off the first few layers, and the left of it is left, un left unharmed. And there's also natural oils in the bark as well. It's nice. If you kind of think like a rusty nail or the Statue of Liberty, when those metals, they do rust, they change colors. So we will be seeing some of those colors throughout our time in Thompson Carto. That's really good. Um, okay. Yeah, that one's kind of closer to Riverside Park. Um, yeah, it's kind of upscale. It's like local fare. We actually got to see the whole thing. Yeah, it's kind of Rapids are so high and so dangerous, they're at a five or a six. So definitely for those uh, those fear riders out there. But there's some pretty funny names too.
we have our small yeah, yeah. mighty wave rock team here on the right hand side. And thank you all for your timely efforts. It's 6.43. So we're uh, leaving here 17 minutes ahead of schedule. That's pretty amazing. Wow. because the Canadian Pacific Railroad was essentially what kind of uh, spurred Canada to join together and create the country that we now know as Canada. Back in the day, it, uh, about it, in the late 1800s there, there was, uh, there was quite a bit of movement happening here in North America politically. So America, the same year that Canada became a country in 1867, uh, without BC, he wanted to see it from sea to shimmering sea in his words. So back in 1871, BC joined on with that promise of building a railroad across the entire country and connecting all of Canada. I went to Europe 
this summer, but that was the first time. They uh, then set up spur lines. So you can kind of picture like runaway lanes on a highway for all those big transport trucks. That's essentially what they had. They had three of these going off the main uh, the main track here. Okay. 
Yeah, my last picture. Yeah, my last picture.